Hello guys and gals and welcome. I join you here in the rain. I've said this before, haven't I? Deja vu. Uh, I've joined you here in the rain uh, to talk about Eschuda's temper. Hopefully it will cool off her temper. Uh, this particular uh, sorceress orb is a relatively high level sorceress orb, uh, which does have some rather terrible variables, uh, which can be really effective for specific characters. And we'll talk about it uh, as we go along. So uh, right off the bat, you'll see that it is an Eldritch Orb with uh, a, a level requirement of 72, so relatively high level item. Um, it does have a plus three to Sorceress skill levels on it, but unfortunately it does not always spawn that way. Um, it can spawn as low as plus one and as high as plus two, which means that you can potentially find a rather terrible as Chuda's Temper with only plus one to Sorceress skills. It also has a relatively high 40% faster cast, which is great. Um, absolutely great to have on any kind of sorceress item, uh, because, of course, faster cast is what makes them deal out more damage, and uh, more damage is always better. Uh, we have 20% to lightning skill damage, which, unfortunately, is only 10 to 20%. Uh, we have 20% to fire skill damage, which unfortunately is 10 to 20%. So a variable on both of those. Uh, we also have 30 to energy, which is again another variable of 20 to 30. Uh, they must have just really hated sorceresses when they made this item. They're like, we're going to make an item that could potentially be really awesome, but we're going to put so many variables on it that it's probably going to always spawn with crap. Um... Now, uh, Eschuda's Temper uh, can also be socketed. Of course, you could put something in there like a uh, All Resistance Jewel or something like that, uh, which could be interesting. Unfortunately, Eschuda's Temper doesn't really um, function as well as you would think. Um, if I was a Cold Sorceress, for instance, and I was using Depth's Fathom, the uh, plus skill damage on Cold on that item is actually really, really effective. It gives you a very nice bonus. So, for instance, if it gives me 20% skill damage, I get 20% skill damage. Um, but because Lightning Mastery and Fire Mastery function differently than Cold Mastery does, um, the 20% Lightning skill damage and the 20% Fire skill damage actually just add on to Lightning and Fire Mastery and have less of an effect than they would otherwise. Um, the actual numbers add up to something like this. So if you have 20% extra Lightning damage on top of the, say, 338% uh, increase from Lightning Mastery at level 25, you would, uh, you would only be getting a 4.5% increase in damage with the 20% on this particular item, which isn't as great. Unfortunately, uh, that is just how Fire and Lightning Mastery work. And this, unfortunately, means that you would have a much better time with a Heart of the Oak for fire damage, and you would probably have a much better time with Crescent Moon for lightning damage because of Crescent Moon's uh, far superior negative lightning resistance. Um, and this is kind of how things work. See, Death's Fathom works very well for Cold, ma cold because Cold Mastery already provides negative lightning resistance, or cold resistance. And... Um, Crescent Moon works really good for Lightning because it provides the Lightning resistance while the Lightning Mastery is providing the bonus to damage. Um, fire uh, doesn't really have a good option. Maybe Hand of Justice, I believe, has negative fire resistance on it. Um, but it's uh, but Heart of the Oak is going to be a much better option, I think, for fire sorceresses. Um, especially considering some of the fire sorceresses don't even need increased attack speed or increased uh, faster cast. You could go with some uh, some other choices. Um, unfortunately, as Chudas is just one of those items that just, it either never seems to spawn with the right plus to skills, or it just isn't quite useful to you at that particular time. Uh, depending on what item you have, it could potentially be useful for some time until you get something better. Um, it's just not going to be uh, best in slot, I don't think, for a lot of characters. Um, but let's take a look and see where you could potentially find yourself in Eschudas. Um, I do feel like that's a good uh, thing to do. So let's go over to uh, Silo's Pen, and we're going to plug in Eschudas, and we're going to assume that we have some pretty good magic find, because it's such a high-level item, I just don't really see why not. So let's pretend we have 300% magic find, and uh, we're going to be hunting bosses first, and we're going to pull up the Eschudas Temper, and uh, we're going to see what kind of monsters we could potentially find this from. So it does look like we have a pretty good chance on Hell Diablo on a non-quest kill of 1 in 905. Uh, Hell Bale, 1 in 923. Um, Mephisto, 1 in 935. Uh, we also have, uh, even Duriel has a 1 in 5,344 chance, which isn't bad. Um, really good chances there on all the Hell, uh, Hell monsters with 300% magic find. 
Uh, let's take a look at Super Uniques real quick, and uh, let's see what kind of uh, probabilities we have on these. So not the greatest at 1 in 10,000 on a lot of these. A lot of these are not good to farm anyway. Uh, I mean, you could farm Corpse Fire uh, in Hell Difficulty. That's actually not bad. He's, a, he's a pretty easy to find. Uh, 1 in 10,000 on him. Uh, Eldritch the Rectifier, 1 in 10,000. That's not bad. Uh, Shank the Overseer, 1 in 10,000. Uh, Doc Cold Crow, Doc Farron, Dark Elder, those are all relatively easy to get to. Pendle Skin, relatively easy to farm. Thrash Socket, also relatively easy to farm. Festo the Armor, he's always in the same place next to the Forge. Um, interesting monsters to farm, I suppose. Um, a lot of choices there. You could definitely go with whatever your character uh, works well against. Like, obviously, Corpse Fire is always cold immune, so probably not a cold sorceress would want to go farm that character. But, of course, if you're farming for um, an to Semper, you're probably a fire or lightning sorceress. So there you go. Corpse Fire could be an easy choice. Uh, Pindle Skin is also um, an easy choice, obviously, in Hell Difficulty. But see, Corpse Fire is um, in the beginning of Hell Difficulty in Act 1. So you could very easily farm Corks Fire as soon as you get to Hell Difficulty and try and get your hands on NS Chuda's Tempers before you even leave Act 1 Hell Difficulty. Which was interesting. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when it is about a fiery temper of Eschuda. And uh, I know there really wasn't much to talk about with this particular item, uh, but there's not really a lot going on with this item. Um, it's a very simple item with very simple stats, and unfortunately, you're just probably never going to find it in perfect condition. Um, the, the variable on the plus the skills, the variable on the lightning skill damage, the variable on the fire skill damage, and the variable on the energy all add up to a very um, poor drop chance in a perfect condition. Uh, if you do happen to find a perfect S shooters, it might be uh, worth a pretty penny. Who knows? Um, not exactly sure. Uh, tell me what you think about S shooters. I'm, uh, I'm interested to hear what uh, what you think S shooters is good for. Have you tested it out and found that the skill damage is better than I'm stating? Uh, let me know. Um, do you use it on your character as your best in slot item? Let me know. I'm always interested to hear what people have to say. And, uh, and as always, keep watching.